previously on Project Terminal Devlog. In this video, I'll be doing my first devlog on Project Terminal. The player has to charge their dash by spinning their knife. So all I have to do is make a simple custom state machine for my AI system that interacts with this Unity's nav mesh system. I wanted the player to be able to combo their attacks. The player pulls the enemy's hands to themselves and attacks back. It's been more than three weeks since my last Project Terminal devlog. This time my focus was on the visual side of things, including the work in progress map. First of all, I would like to thank JL for giving me an idea to determine whether a player is going up or down on a slope by using the velocity vector of the player instead of two ray casts shooting front and back. This is such a simple solution, yet I couldn't think about it for some reason. As mentioned in my last video, I added a quick camera shake effect to make the attacks more impactful. It looks somewhat good when the player is in close range combat stance, but I'm not sure about when the player is in the regular stance and just slashing. I then moved on to fixing counterattacking. While it visually appeared to be good enough in the video, it was nowhere close to it being finished. There were mechanical bugs that I had to fix. For instance, if a player moves back, the attack wouldn't even register because the tip of the knife wouldn't hit the enemy or if the player is looking somewhere else while performing the attack, it would just look odd. To resolve this mechanical issue, I came up with an idea of limiting the player's movement and camera when the player is counterattacking. This also allowed me to put a bit more fancier camera animation. To be fair, counterattacking is still quite incomplete. To me, it seems like the attack isn't fast enough, especially when the movement and camera look of the player are restricted while counterattacking. Perhaps I should remove the animation where the player spins the knife before they perform an attack. Another logical issue I made with counterattacking is there isn't a point in counterattacking an enemy. All of the enemies are one shot as of right now, so if you're slashing them anytime before they perform an attack, you're essentially counterattacking already as you won't get hit. I'll probably make enemies die after two hits so that you're slipping their attacks with counterattack mechanics, but at the same time, I'm also concerned about the pace of the game if I do that. I also implemented a warning effect when a player is at low health. The player has two health points. In other words, if the player gets hit two times by the enemies, it's game over. So a warning effect would show up when the player is at one health point. Additionally, there is also a regeneration system that will regenerate players' health points after a certain amount of time. Naturally, the warning effect goes away if this happens. Now that minor visual effects are somewhat in place, I proceeded with a new movement mechanic for the game, grappling hooks. I originally didn't want to make one because I was worried about my game being too similar to other parkour games, but I did it anyway. After careful consideration, I figured grappling hooks will allow the player to move a bit more freely around the map, and it's a good perk when the player is in a regular stance. Without grappling hooks, I could imagine a player staying in a close range combat stance the whole time as there weren't really big differences in mobility. The mechanics of the grappling hook system weren't very difficult for me to make. I was using rigid body to control my character, so I could just rely on Unity's physics without doing any calculations on my own. However, what ended up being more difficult was to render the grapple hook and connect the grapple hook physics with my current setup. When the player presses the middle mouse button, it first fires a ray cast from the camera to determine the target point to where the grapple hook will be attached. The line renderer component then travels from the player's head position towards this point. The direction in which the line renderer travels can be calculated by subtracting the grapple point with the hand position. We then want to get a normalized directional vector and multiply it with a certain speed. Doing this will allow the line renderer to travel equally fast regardless how big the distance between player's hand and the grapple point is. Once the line renderer reaches anywhere close to the grapple point, it will enable the hook game object as well as the grapple mechanics I've mentioned earlier. Visually, this ended up looking pretty good in my opinion but it seemed a bit too flat, so I projected a sign function on top of the line renderer. With that being said, there was a small problem with my grapple mechanics. It was too hard to aim. Mainly because I'm shooting a thin ray, I have to be very precise when I'm shooting grapple hooks, especially if I'm aiming for a corner of an object. This whole problem might have not been an issue if I had a crosshair though. Nonetheless, personally, I'm not a fan of having a lot of UI elements. They sometimes tend to be distracting or break immersion. My goal at the moment is to not have any UI elements in the game. Now to fix the grapple hook problem, my approach is to use sphere cast instead of a regular ray cast. 
In contrast to regular ray casts, sphere cast shoots a big sphere. So even when the player isn't exactly aiming precisely at the corner, the sphere cast should be able to find the nearest point within the radius and attach a grapple hook. And this made the grapple hook system much nicer. It was then time for a proper map, as I promised from my last devlog video. I have no experience in making an actual playable map, so it was quite an interesting challenge for me. The game takes place inside of a building, surrounded by a futuristic city. I started with roughly sketching the city. The exterior looks something similar to this, where two buildings are connected together with a bridge. The player is expected to climb up the buildings by going through various obstacles to reach the final object and perhaps there will be a final boss fight as well to challenge the player's combat skills. Now this map will serve more as a tutorial or act zero. The interior sketch was very rough here, so I made another sketch explicitly showing the interior design. When I was done with my sketches, I had a rough idea of how the map should look like. Because the exterior will also be partly visible to the player, I had to make a quick city landscape. Cities can be really complex. As an indie developer, making a big city with great details is just not an option for me. Besides, the city landscape will only be partly visible, and the player will be staying indoors most of the time. Therefore, I decided to make a city made out of simple cubes and rough textures in Blender. I thought with enough post-processing and minor tweaks, it would look convincing enough from a distance. Oh, and in case you're wondering if I'm doing all of this on my own, no, I'm just following a YouTube tutorial. Once that was done, I modified the city mesh to make it more suitable to my game and cut it into pieces. This way the game doesn't need to render the entire city at all times. Instead, it only renders visible portions of the city. I then found a free tower model online, which could serve as a main tower. I put the building on top of the city and roughly made an entrance. As I addressed earlier, I dislike the concept of using UI elements to directly guide players. This is also why I made tall buildings for this map. If you're standing at the very bottom of the building and see various obstacles that lead to the very top of the building, you indirectly know that your objective is to go up. The question that players might have at this point is, how should I go up? When it comes to map designs, especially single player map designs, I believe it's important that the developer shouldn't guide too much on how the game works. With this in mind, I'll be letting the player discover their own way to go up in my map. Apart from that, I've also made the building quite open where the player isn't restricted in playing the game in just one way. This not only gives the joy of navigating the map, but also allows players to try out different paths after playing the game once. All of these can be great, but not all of the players can find their path going up. To get around this problem without directly guiding players, I put glowy cubes on the main path they should follow. I believe lights on a map are things that players unconsciously follow when they play a game. That was it for this devlog. I originally wanted to get more things done, especially on the map, but I was quite busy with other stuff. I'll most likely continue to work on the map and perhaps fix some bugs in my next devlog video. Additionally, things like speed lines need some tweaking. They seem to be quite distracting at the moment. Otherwise, there are also quite a lot of bugs that aren't displayed in the videos. This has been Semicoder. I kind of know how to code.